So let's go back to the multi-track view, and you can also use shortcut keys, 8, 9, or 0. 9 will take us to the multi-track, and I'm going to resize some of my panels here. And let's talk about the effects panel. Now again, I mentioned that the multi-track view is a non-destructive real-time environment. So for example, we have this kick snare loop track, and let's take a listen to this. And what I'm first going to do is I'm just going to solo the track, and we can listen to it dry. Okay. And let's say that we want to add some reverb to that. So we can go over to the effects panel. We'll go to where it says delay effects. Let's grab our studio reverb and drag and drop it right onto the track. And when we do that, it brings up the track effects rack. And inside the rack, we have lots of new features, the ability to see the actual input level and then the output levels of the track. The green button that you see down here is actually a power button, so we can enable or disable the effect. We also have a pre and post fader switch here, and we also have the freeze track option. And freeze is very cool because if you find that after adding lots of real-time effects that your multi-track playback is maybe slowing down a bit or sometimes stuttering with a less powerful machine, you can freeze the track effects, which will basically create a render of the effects applied to the track. And again, this can be unfrozen at any point in time. But it's basically a way to take the effects out of the CPU and free up power for other things. But in this case, one effect, one track, not a problem. So we've turned on our studio reverb, and if we play now, you can obviously hear a marked difference. And of course, as it's playing back, we can also modify the settings. So let's go ahead and play it again. And this time, I'm actually going to just wind back a bit. So what I'm actually going to do is take this effects rack. And again, this is a dockable panel. And I can drag this over here. Now I've got my effects rack docked very nicely. Let's go ahead and wind back just a bit and play this and make changes to the settings. And let's turn off our video for just a moment. Here we go. Okay, so we've made some modifications to the wet-dry balance of the output level, and we like that. So now if we want to, we can basically unsolo this track. Let's move our playhead, and now we can play back the whole thing all together. So that's real-time operation, again, non-destructive application of reverb to a track. And of course, we can make changes to this at any point in time, and we haven't actually affected or changed the master wave file. If we wanted to destructively make changes to that, we can simply take this WAV file and double-click on it to bring it into the editing view. And as we listen now, we can hear that it's dry. So if we wanted to actually apply an effect to this, we would make a selection like this. And again, we can use our Effects panel here, or go up to the Effects menu, choose Delay Effects, Studio Reverb, and now we see the same window here. And let's go ahead and click on the Preview button. And there you go. Now, if we were to click OK, this is actually going to destructively change the file. And you can see that the waveform has actually updated. So here it is a few seconds before dry. And when we reach this point here, it will be effectively wet, filled with reverb. So that's the difference between destructive and non-destructive. Now, of course, we can undo this change. But once we save the file, we have actually destructively modified this original wave. Now, if you wanted to take one of these things, like adding reverb or delay or compression, and apply them to different files at different times, you can create favorites. And those favorites are stored in the Favorites panel here. And you can see that we have a few that are commonly used, things like Fade In, Fade Out, or Repair Transient, which is used when you're in the spectral view for repairing audio. Basically, the Favorites panel allows you to recall common tasks and perform functions very, very quickly. So now that you've seen how to apply effects destructively and non-destructively, let's click back over to the multi-track and talk about some of the new tools that we have inside Audition 2.0. So one of the things I'm going to do first is recall my original workspace. So I'm going to go over to Workspace, and it resets our screen. Go ahead and resize a few of these and close our Levels panel. OK. So right away you'll notice that we have these tools up here. And there are several tools that we have to work with. The first one is the hybrid tool. And if you are a previous Cool Edit user or Audition 1.0 user, even 1.5, this is sort of the old school tool that allowed you to right click to move clips like this, left click to select. And this is nice because it basically takes advantage of both of the mouse buttons without the need to switch tools. However, if you like using the standard time selection and Adobe Move tools, we have those as well. And you can see up here we have the time selection tool, which is shortcut key S. 
and the standard move copy tool which is shortcut key V and of course if we select that here left click to move and if you right click and drag and release this will allow you to create reference copies unique copies or actually move the clip as well and in this case we're just going to cancel the action and let's move it back to where it originally was and similarly with the time selection tool this is how we would make selections if we wanted to say do a mix down or a bounce a new tool in Adobe Audition 2.0 is the scrub tool and you have a couple different ways that you can scrub let's take off our selection here now if you're a Premiere user you know that if you grab the playhead or the CTI the current time indicator you can actually grab it here and we're gonna grab that little yellow triangle and if we scrub if we drag this along with a left mouse click you can hear that we're actually scrubbing the audio but this is scrubbing the entire multitrack so if we select the scrub tool come over to this drum track and just click here you can see that we're just scrubbing that individual track and you also have modifier keys to change the way that you scrub if you hold down the alt key as you drag this will perform a tape style scrub like this and if you hold down the control key and drag this will perform more of a shuttle type operation like this so again a couple different scrubbing options inside the multitrack now if we click over to the edit view and we're just going to double click on this kick snare loop again you'll also notice that we have the scrub tool available here and again this performs the same operations by default if we just click and drag it's a basic scrub without vary speed once again if you hold down the alt key now you can perform a tape style scrub with vary speed control and the control key will give you a shuttle scrub So, very nice and a very fast way to sort of navigate inside the edit view and the multitrack and to find specific edit points or points where you might want to add something like an envelope or any kind of audio transition or effect. So let's switch back to the time selection tool and you'll notice that we don't have a hybrid or a move tool because you're not really moving inside the edit view. Your view is essentially static except that you can zoom around on the X and Y axis and there's a couple different ways that you can do that. First off, if you want to zoom horizontally, you can come up to this green horizontal bar you'll notice that the icon changes and if you left click and drag we can zoom horizontally like this you also have the ability to come down to the timeline ruler here you'll notice that it turns into a hand and if you're using a wheel mouse you can actually wheel up or down and you can zoom all the way down to sample level and it's at this point where you could actually modify the samples like this let's just undo that control Z and zoom back out the same type of mouse wheel zooming can be performed on the y-axis as well simply by moving your mouse over to the y-axis and scrolling up or down so a couple different ways to move inside the edit view okay but we're still talking about tools and this brings us to using the spectral frequency display and two of our really cool tools for editing and mastering so let's go up to the view menu choose spectral frequency display where now we're effectively seeing frequency over time frequency along the y-axis here time along the x-axis and we have two specific tools here that will allow you to highlight specific frequency sections and perform different operations things like adding effects to a specific frequency range or using our repair transient function to do different types of noise reduction or sort of audio healing which you may have used in Audition 1.5 so if you select the marquee tool which is common to Photoshop and other Adobe applications you see that you can actually make rectangular selections across a frequency specific range but the newest tool for Adobe Audition 2.0 is the lasso tool or the freeform selection tool and this will actually allow you to make non rectangular selections like this and once again perform operations in only those selected frequency ranges now just keep in mind that these tools both the marquee and the lasso tool are specific to frequency space editing and they can only be used in the spectral frequency display they cannot be used in the regular waveform display 